really, my mom, and um, so she's 84 years old, and she's um, one of the oldest bloggers on the internet. Yeah, and so she's been doing it for, I don't know, four or five years. So I'm Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com. This whole session is going to be about video, putting video on the web. I just wrote this book, Get Seen. It just came out on Monday, so I'm very excited about it. I also do a, um, a seminar on the book that's three hours. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to condense the three hours from the book, and then to three hours, and I'm going to do it in 30 minutes. So I'm going to blast through really, really fast so you can get an idea of what all, you know, putting video on the, the web is, is like. What, um, so what did you guys think, just impressions on that video? Just shut up. Great, awesome. Interesting. What? Intimate. Okay, so you're all talking about the content. Um, and no one's, well, you know what, no one said, Hey, that's um, lousy YouTube quality or crappy. No. That isn't really happening anymore. YouTube, that was from YouTube. I streamed it from YouTube. So it's HD quality now. And, you know, that was broadcast through this thing, so on the computer it even looks better. And I shot it with a, um, this Panasonic still camera I have that also shoots video. With no mic, just this point and shoot camera. The whole point of this, this session is that you can put video online with probably a camera you have. You don't, don't be intimidated by getting like a huge camera like they have and all kinds of mic kits and things. You can do it with just a point and shoot and it ends up looking really good. So, oh, the scheduled backup of my personal data is about to start. I'm going to just skip that. That's okay. I'm a little nervous. That's nice. Okay, we'll close that. And go right over to the presentation, which is in here somewhere. Here it is. So stevegarfield.com is where all my information is. So what we're going to do, go real fast through this. Choosing a camera, lighting and sound, shooting video, editing, uploading, distribution, and embedding in WordPress. Um, first thing I like to say is, uh, do you guys have a platform? How many people own their name on the web, meaning you have a URL of your name. Okay, I think that's very important. If you don't, you should go see if your name's available and grab it and have that. Um, right now, I use for my, my site, it's a, um, using my web, but I just have stevegarfield.com, and I point everywhere else from this. And one thing that I can do on the site is embed a video player. This is like one of the sim most simple ways to have a video player, and I use Look TV, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that, but, I can put all my videos on Blip, and then it gives me this player which is, that I can embed somewhere. So the most recent videos on the left, and the directory of all my older videos is on the right. Very simple way of doing it. So the first thing I want to talk about is what camera. There's all kinds of cameras to uh, choose. You, oh, is that it, the same one, Codex ZI8? So this is the one that I like right now to recommend to people as a pocket video camera because it shoots HD video in all these different flavors. Um, it also takes photos, and it also has a mic jack. A lot of the portable video cameras don't allow you to have a microphone to get better sound. So like with the flip camera, in order to get good sound, you have to be pretty close, but then you're kind of too close, so like there's a dilemma of what to do. So with this camera, it has a good onboard microphone, but you can also attach a microphone. And one microphone that I recommend for people, they're like, oh, what if I want to do an interview? I have this one, it's an Audio-Technica AT2020 mic. And so if I'm doing an interview, I can put this on you, and then I have like a, a 20 feet of cable that I could, that I could use to uh, interview you. If I could set this on a table, maybe, that clips on, do the interview, it's gonna get excellent sound, and I can be you know, really far away with HD, you, you might want to do that, like have the interview subject over on the left and kind of have the background. So this is like an unbelievable setup. The camera is like about 179, and this this um, 182020 lap mic is about 23, 25 dollars. 
which when I first saw it on the web, I couldn't believe that it was so cheap. Because lab mic sets cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So it, this thing works really, really great. Now, if you want to um, interview someone and you also want to be on the, on the uh, audio, you can get it like a splitter. One of these little splitters, AB splitter, which this one's to um, let you share an iPod so two people can listen. But you can also plug in two of those mics, one on the subject, one on you, and you get both audio going into the camera. And this thing costs nothing, a few dollars. So it's $23 plus $23 plus $2 plus $179. You have a really good interview with it. Um, so there's that. Mic Jack has a removable battery, so you can buy extra batteries. It's a rechargeable. And then an SD card. So if you're out for the day shooting a whole bunch of things, and you have a camera that fills up, you have to offload it to a laptop or something. But with this you have an SD card, you can take that out, pop in another SD card, and keep going. You can put a 32 gigabyte SD card on the Kodak. Uh, image stabilization, so there's my mom. <laughs> um, in this example, I got the, um, this Gorilla Pod, which is pretty inexpensive as a tripod, and I have it so I've got a whole bunch of books and put it up at a, at a correct height instead of like looking up at the person. Everybody who's doing a webcam is always looking down. It's better to be, to be straight on. So those books help with that. And one thing I noticed when I was shooting my mom in this one, she had her hand on the table and she's like going like this. I was like, oh man, that's gonna, the whole video is going to be shaky. But the Z8 has image stabilization and it, was, it wasn't shaky. So that was uh, surprising to me, but it worked. <laughs> Uh, so what happened was, New England Cable News was over the house interviewing my mother because they want to know what elder blogging is like and how it helps her in her life. So New England Cable News is there, we're doing the video, and she says, oh, did you see Curb Your Enthusiasm the other night with Larry David? He couldn't open it. You know, I don't know if you guys watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, so. What happened was, I asked the reporter um, if the clip with my mother saying she watched Curb Your Enthusiasm was going to make it on New England Cable News. And she told me, yes. And so I took my video of my mother talking about it, and I put that up right away because they knew New England Cable News would be writing about my mom. And so for like SEO, the guy that was just here last, I knew I would get hit, so I had to have that video up real quick. And then it got on this BuzzFeed as like one of the top things. It was, so that was very um, timely for SEO. And then here's, I guess I'll play a little bit of this. Did you happen to see Curb Your Enthusiasm? Not yet. What happened? Well, on, on his new show, Larry David starts the show and he's so frustrated because he can't open the product. It's a big package, it's plastic, he can't open it, and he goes to the kitchen drawer and he takes out a hammer and he takes out a knife. He can't open it and he gets very aggravated. And when I thought, when I saw Larry David do that, I said, we have different styles, because when I can't open something, I can't open it, so I can't open it. But Larry, he was nervous. <laughs> Hi, this is Millie Garfield from My Mama's Blog, and I have a special message for Larry David. I happened to catch his show recently, and he was having the worst time opening the package. And I can appreciate the fact that you can't open packages because that's my problem too. But I have learned over time that you have to be patient. Don't get upset. Don't really get upset. Look at the package. Study it. And there has to be a way that you can open it without getting so upset. So pay attention, Larry, to what I say. Yeah, my mother needs a round of applause for that. Um, what do I want to say about that? Um, oh, so this is on YouTube, and some person comments, and they say, doesn't that lady know it's a, it's a TV show? You know, it's not real. Right? So, but what that commenter didn't know was, Larry David was interviewed on NPR, and you know, Curb Your Enthusiasm isn't really scripted. It's kind of, you know, ad lib and they make stuff up. He really, he was on the radio and said he really couldn't open the package. <laughs> that was like more real, so that commenter, you know, he was wrong. <laughs>
Okay, so there's image stabilization in the in the camera, but when you shoot at the higher HD resolution, it really it really needs to be more more steady because it it, it doesn't look as good if, if you're holding it and it's a little shaky. So there are different ways to, to stabilize it yourself. And one way I do it, like, um, if, so um, I'm, I didn't get to lighting yet, but if I was interviewing someone and maybe it was here and I needed to stabilize it and I didn't have a tripod, some of these cameras you can just rest on a table or something. So I would like rest it right on the table, have it sitting here, and then I bring the chair over and have the person sitting there and turn on record and then just like leave it, not hold it. I'd stand like kind of right beside it and then do my interview or put a chair here so then it wouldn't shake. Another uh, two tripods, um, there's an example of a Manfrotto tripod and the, and the other one is a, a monopod. And what that is, it's, it's one long thing and you can walk around and hold it and put it steady but it also has a secret at the bottom. You unscrew it and those legs can pop out so it can also be a Tripod. It's a really cool monopod that you can also have as a tripod. So some of the tripods are big, and I don't really like carrying them around. So I use that monopod. <coughs> oh, and then I use this other one, um, which is called the X Shot, and it's like this. And you, you put the camera on on the ends here. So the thing with the um, a lot of these pocket video cameras. The distance that you have to be away to focus, like on this one, is 3.2 feet, and my arm is just about 3.2 feet. Like, so if I hold it about this far, I'm in focus, but most people hold it, they'll be like a little out of focus, and the things in the background will be in focus. So a way to fix that distance to get the camera farther away, as far as it needs to be, you could have this thing, you could hold it like this. Or you could also do shots where you could, like, have it pointing out that way, and I can say, hey, how you doing? Do here, up here, and like sky shots and anything. So this is kind of a cool little, very, very small. And I have this whole little pack that I carry everything in. I put that in there, the tripod in there, the camera in there, and like everything is in here that I need. So that's that. How are we doing? Good so far? Is this good? Yep. So next is lighting. Um, so I worked at Channel 2 um, on the auction, doing a lot of production of the segments. And I work with these cameramen from Channel 2. These guys are really experienced in what, what they do is they look for the natural light. They don't really bring light kits around with them. So if I was going to interview someone right now and here, all the windows are down, I'd like go in that room here. There's shades up and I bring them in there. There's a lot of good light. So I look for the light. That's the thing to do. I taught a session. And this guy was in it. Um, when uh, President Obama got a Nobel Peace Prize, he was on the plane with Wi-Fi when he found out. He was sitting by the window, so he had great light, and he had like a little camera like this, so he held the camera up and, and shot this video. Congratulations, Mr. President. And then he put it on CNN's iReport, which is the citizen journalism site. And in my seminar, I'm like, hey, anybody can be a reporter, send stuff in. He sent it into iReport and it got on CNN, on TV, his first video that he ever made. <laughs> he emailed me and he's like, what you said worked. <laughs> I was on a plane and I did the video and he did it all from the plane and he got on CNN, first one. And he's like, he was so excited. So that's just an example of how easy it is. And here's a light, you know, me with a bigger light kit, a total light uh, I'm using here to shoot a video. And then um, some other examples of nice lights. This uh, Ralph or Ren is a nice, nice one. You know, you can use it in your room or use it as a light. Or the other one, you know, bring in from the, the garage, you know, a work light. But you know, any kind of light. This in him, Lee, my friend, marketing props. Thank you, Ann, for being in the cell. So this slide. So. Um, you, you can have four lights. This is what the pros do. You have a main light on the person. So when you have that, it's going to cast shadows on the other side. So then you have this spill light on the other side that fills, takes away the shadows. So then the person looks really good. Then you have a background light. Um, like you see how, I don't know if you can see it, but these plants, there's a light on the back there. That gives more interest to the background and brings it out. And then a backlight, like, uh, from the back of the person separates the person from the background. So, here's Anne, we're doing a, sh a, sh a shoot. That's my main light, a total light. Then I have a little light 
on the right, and in the back you can see a light at the back wall to, to brighten up the back wall. Oops. Also, we have a special video. You don't need to see that, but um, okay. Here's another light. Um, this is really cool. It's an LED light. And it's a SEMA light, S I M A. And it has like, like a 9 by 9 matrix of lights. All right. So here, here's what it looks like. I put these um, gels on it to make it less bright. But there it is. It goes on here, like that. And then take your camera. And that goes on that little screw there. And then at the bottom, as you put on a tripod, or you can just carry it around and interview someone. And then it, you know, puts, it puts light on the person. So that's a very good thing to have. You could also um, have this on a tripod. And you could put this light on hip on here to have it kind of be on the side or you know move it around. And this this steam of light, um, it's like does anybody know it's like around 30 bucks or 40, 40 bucks something? Uh, on Amazon. If you go to um, at my book site, stevegarfield.com slash get scene, there's a store and I have all links to all these things. I make like a few pennies. <laughs> Okay, sound. So we have the, uh, you know, there's all different kinds of mics. There's a handheld, shotgun, and the a, it's the ATR3350. That's the little loud mic I use all the time. And here's a video I shot with Adam Weiss um, showing differences between not using a mic and using all those mics. Hey everybody, it's Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com and I'm here with Adam Weiss from AdamWeiss.net. Excellent. And we're going to test out the Kodak ZIA uh, microphone uh, connections on the camera. So this is a new pocket HD video camera that has a microphone jack on it. And that's kind of a breakthrough for pocket cameras, don't you think? Yeah, you generally have to get close enough so that you can hear or far enough away that you can see, but you have to make that choice when you're using these little pocket cameras because the built-in microphones work very well. Yeah, so if right. you can plug something in, whether it's a big mic or a little mic, then you can get better sound. Right, that's the dilemma with cameras like the flip camera, and um, you know that the microphone is right on the camera, so you want to get as close to the person as possible, but with that camera, you need to really stand like three and a half, four, oops. We're over. This is supposed okay, I'm going to skip ahead a little and show you. Um, all right. So the microphone. Okay, here we go. That would be good for doing interviews and reporting. Um, this one is a couple years old. They replaced it with a new model, which looks exactly the same. Yeah. But they had to do it for European uh, heavy metal standards and stuff. But it's the same microphone. I can't remember the name of the new one. But if you look so at European it, heavy metal music. <laughs> well, they have to the environmental standards. Oh, okay. Right. So there was something bad in it. Um, so let's see. So we have the microphone, and then um, this is an XLR connector, and the battery is in here. Yeah, it has. All right, plug okay. that in. All right, and now probably long enough to reach. I use this with a recorder in my pocket, so we'll see. Okay, so we're going to plug this um, right into the side. Yep, here we go. So hopefully we can hear this microphone. Should be better sound than that, but not a different quality of sound because it's not a directional microphone, it's the same non-directional kind of microphone. So you can see the difference there. Let's just skip ahead. So now we do the shotgun. And the other end. It's over there by the camera. So why don't you talk into it now. Talk like 
regular. Okay, so we're going to do a transition test. Now you hear me through the Kodak ZI8, and Steve's about to plug in this shotgun microphone, and you can see the difference. But now the microphone's plugged in, and should be able to hear me through this and much, much closer. It might be too loud, but that's... Okay, so there's that one, and then the lab mic. Cheap microphone, too, so anybody. This is the batteries in these uh, for a number of video shoots that lasted a couple hours before I had... So then you can see the difference of, of what it's like to have it. It's like you hear it more echoey versus like more direct. Um, and this was the, I had a, a splitter, a, a different kind of splitter when I used two microphones. And this is how I configured the thing with a, a shotgun mic that I have and I just uh, attached underneath. And so with that, instead of having a wired mic on someone, the shotgun's good. If I'm walking around here, interviewing people and like I'm just moving around and it's pointing directly at who I'm talking to. Okay, so successful videos, my friend Tim Street says they need to have spectacle, story, and emotion to be successful. Um, there's a few examples here, we don't have that much time. Um, I'm going to go to this one here, which is really good, it's by my friends the, the Bowie Brothers, and they have a, a photography and wedding photography business. And one thing they do um, is, this is this is really cool for, for business, is they show in their videos what it's like to do business with them. So they do a photo shoot, and what they did was they made a movie of the photo shoot. So if anybody was considering using them, they could see, oh, this is how they are to work with. Oh, this is what a photo shot, photo shoot is like. You know, and it, I think it's a really good way of you know, personalizing uh, business, so I'll show you what it is. It was really awkward talking. Entry and speaking. So no, but seriously, we're here. Seriously, we're here. Seriously, we are so serious. Where are you? We're here. Okay, we're here at Felicia Day's photo shoot. Hair is being done, then in a second, a little bit of makeup. And then we'll do some headshots. And later today we're gonna do some not headshots. Not headshots. Cool like headshots. Way better. Garfield.com. Of course. Today we're going to review Inbound Marketing by Brian Halligan and Dharma Shaw. But first, a disclosure. I'm friends with Brian and... So, you have to watch the whole thing, but... Um, <laughs> so what I'm thinking is, you know, I could just put the camera there and shoot and have me like that and then and then talk, but what I decided was do a wide shot, show people perspective of where I'm sitting, and I might move the camera and made it closer. Here I am, and then I went like really close. So this is nothing's really changed, but I'm making it more interesting by moving the camera and getting different shots of myself. Um, let's just move on to the next thing. These are all online. Um, editing. What? Oh, that was quick. <laughs> can't, can't do it all in 30 minutes, but um, uh, for editing, 
Very simply, you can use QuickTime Pro on a Mac or PC um, to just cut and paste a video together. The, uh, the Mac has iMovie and the PC has Windows uh, Movie Maker for free. I, my favorite editing application right now is iMovie 09. iMovie 08 got kind of a bad rap because it was so different than iMovie before it and really hard to figure out. iMovie 09, if you haven't tried it and you're on iMovie 08, it's great. It has multiple tracks. I, use it. I used to use Final Cut Pro for years as a professional editor, and I just use iMovie 09 now. It makes things so much easier. Plus editing music. Um, the rule of thumb, if you don't have the rights to the music, don't use it. Um, what I like to do is promote independent artists, and here's one site um, where you can use the music. It's called iota, I-O-D-A, promonet.com, and they just require a link back, you know, so people can buy the music. It's a very good site. And then another one that's fairly new to me, you might know it, it might have been around for a while, but it's called SoundCloud. And this is a site where really great musicians post their music, and there's a, a license on it that tells you whether you can use it or not. And some of, some of them just, they want you to use it to get promotion, and, and they don't require anything. So I found some great music, and when I use it, I even take the step, I email the, the artist and say, hey, I'm using your music. And then they're like, oh, you know, they're very excited, and then we kind of start talking. So this sound file is very, very cool. A lot of people want to know what export settings to use. Uh, you know, here's an example of export settings I use. It says video bitrate 3000. Um, and I have done reports for rocketboom.com. That's a news show out of New York. They actually require 5000. But it's, this number has gotten larger and larger over time. So the quality is better and better and better. And that's why these videos look really good. So I use probably 5000 now. and then. Um, I export in mono, audio, um, it doesn't seem to matter for the web. And one, one thing, when you're using the, uh, the ZI-8 and this lav mic, it's only mono. So it goes to like one channel, the right-hand channel. And then when you export, if you export it in mono, then it's on both channels. So that's, that's just what I do with, with audio. So let's see, we're almost, so I have like quarter pass, right? So let's see what else we're going to do here. Okay, hosting solutions and then and then embedding. So we're doing still doing still doing good, you guys. Cool. Yep. Oh, you have a question? Yeah. Um, Where's the mic? Right here. Question. I guess my question is the whole diminishing marginal returns or like opportunity cost of editing. Um, I don't know if you can comment a little bit on like where's the line where it's a good idea to edit versus you know what you're just investing more time than it's worth for a longer video. Uh, yeah, so a, a lot of times when I post video, I am I'm capturing a moment and posting it, so there's like there's no editing going on. And what I uh, rush through saying uh, the thing about thinking like an editor, so sometimes before I turn the record button on, I think, okay, what is this video going to be about? So I plan ahead of time so I don't have to edit. Uh, and a lot of my videos, I'll have a beginning, middle, and end. So the beginning is usually me with the camera. Hey, it's Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com. And the reason I do that is because my movie can end up anywhere on the web separated from my site. So we'll give people a way back. That's why my URL is always there. So there's the beginning. We're here to interview you right here at you know, Square Camp Boston, blah, 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 interview. And I'll go, thanks for watching, go to wordcampboston.com and stop. So that doesn't have to be edited because I planned ahead versus, oh, I'm walking around and then like you have a video you have to edit. So a lot of times I'll, I'll plan not to edit. Um, I did a series of like 30 interviews for the book and I put them up on the book's site as the raw footage. And now what I'm doing is I'm going back to them and enhancing them by editing. Like I'm adding the person's name and their URL. And if they talk about their website or something, I'll, I'll put a photo or the website and add images to make it more interesting. So um, I, act, I do both. You know, if you don't have time, then I don't get it. Yep. OK, so hosting solutions. Uh, OK, so this is uh, talking about WordPress and 
YouTube and all the different sites. Uh, so WordPress is cool now because it has easy embeds. Um, how many use WordPress.com? Yep, WordPress.org. Oh, and how many don't have anything? Okay, love it. So this um, easy embed, it works in WordPress.org too. You just paste the URL in. Brilliant. So it's for all these different sites. And for me, it was kind of hard to figure out because it was so easy, I didn't really get it. <laughs> I was like, how does this work? So you just paste in the URL, and then a video pops up on your blog. I mean, that is so easy. <laughs> It hasn't always been this way. Um, and then the other side, so I'm going through all these tests. I take the YouTube embed code and paste all this in, and WordPress changes it to you know this for me, and then it ends up on my blog, which has made things so much easier. Yep. I'm sure, Google can answer this for me, but as long as you're telling us what you know, um, easy embed. Is there any way to specify? Um, size of the player, so that you like to make your players bigger for your blog. Uh, easy embed, is there any way to specify size of the player? I have this, oh, go ahead. You have the size there of the video at 2 places, so on the first line, first line and on the second line. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, so the first line and on the second line, so that you can do that. Yeah, you just have to go and adjust those, but you have to keep a proportion in yeah. at both places, and you can Post your video at 540 or 600 wide. Does uh -huh. that answer your question? No, I, I know how to hack the embed oh, code. I so, meant we're using easy embed or just pasting in the links or some other delimiter that you can add to the URL that that, that hacks the source. Okay, is there some other? So there is, so there is something that I'm going to get to that allows you to do that. Um, I think we'll get to that, okay? Um, okay, so for Facebook, I did it and it didn't work. Does anybody know how to make a Facebook video go on WordPress? No, see, because I don't, I don't think you can. Vimeo, um, same thing. I just went over to Vimeo, put in the URL, embedded it. It, it, it like totally worked. Blip TV, okay, so Blip TV is the site that I use. In the previous examples, you take the URL, you go to your blog post, you paste it in, publish it, this video on your blog. With Flip TV, you don't have to do any of that. You upload your video to Blip, and you say, whenever I upload a new video, I want this automatically posted on my blog. So it saves you from having to copy and paste every time. So this is how I use it. So there's Flip.tv, and here's, when you join there, you get a page. That's my page, stevegarfield.blip.tv. This is the player I showed in the beginning, the most recent video and a playlist of all your videos on the right. So some people who don't even want to get involved in blogging or anything, they just send to this site. There's all their videos. And then you can take that and embed it on your website. Um, so this is what's cool about Blip TV. You can add a thumbnail. All the, the, like YouTube, they say, okay, here are three to choose from. But Blip TV, you can make one up of your own. And you can take an image and you can say, Steve Garfield's video blog, here's my mom, and like make it a thumbnail that's really interesting. So you can customize, that's a really good thing about what. Hey Steve, you can actually embed Facebook videos. So you have to obviously host them on Facebook. And then once they're in the video application, there's an embed call on the bottom of the, the bottom of what window? The window where you actually have the video, like it, it's like properties window. Yeah. There's a link at the bottom, embed code. Okay, for Facebook, there's embed code over on Facebook, which I didn't see. Not intuitive enough for me. So, okay, it's hidden. So, uh, let's move along here. So, with Blip TV, once you put it up there, you can have it go to all of these different sites um, Flickr, YouTube, um, iTunes. Facebook Delicious MySpace, and then you can also have it go to any of the any blogs you want. So I have a blog on TypePad, WordPress, WordPress. You can just add. So you can you can put your video up here once, and it will go to all these places. Uh, Twitter, you can send a message to Twitter, and this is new. You can go to television. Whoa, you know. <laughs> so the way this works is you you apply over on Blip TV. You say, May I? have permission to post to TiVo, Roku, and Boxy, 
and then uh, especially for TiVo, Blip will look at your content and see that it's high quality, and then they'll send it over to TiVo, and then TiVo will decide, is this something that's high enough quality or something that we want on TiVo? So for me, Roku and Boxy approved me, and TiVo's still pending. <laughs> but if it approves it, like I've been on TiVo, and I see Gary Vaynerchuk, Wine Library, like pops up on TiVo, so that is really interesting. That, that's a really new, something really new. Um, so this is what it looks like when you use Blip, and if I, you put it up on Blip, it automatically goes to your, this is wordpress.com, and then it also gives me uh, QuickTime MPEG4, uh, .m4v for an iPhone, uh, and MP3 audio and flash, and I'm gonna tell you about, about that in, in the next slide here. Those are pro features, which cost like $96 for 14 months. So it makes the, you send a QuickTime, a movie up to Blip, it makes it into Flash, puts it on your blog. If you pay the extra, it will make the, the uh, one for iTunes for you, and it'll also make an MP3 audio file for you from your video. So those are worth it. And there's an iTunes feed, so over on Blip, you say, put this on, give me an iTunes feed, and it goes on you know, iTunes. You can put people to iTunes. And then they also have analytics just like YouTube did. So you can see people are interested in my video and then they stop being interested. So I probably have to change something about the way I'm making my videos. Um, TubeMogul is another great site. This allows you to distribute your video to you know, a million sites with one click. You upload your video and give it a bunch of description and tags. And then TubeMogul will distribute to YouTube, Yahoo, MySpace, Blip TV, so if you use two modal to send to Blip, then once it gets the Blip, it'll do all the ones you have over there. So it's really one step distribution. Before this, you want to distribute your video all around the web, you had to visit every single site, and then, you know, I didn't do it, but this way if you want to. And then it goes like more, more all these ones. Uh, humor, instructional sites, they have one TV site, I don't know what that is, but there's a lot, so you can you know, explore that. Oh, and then they give you statistics, and in one place you can look at the statistics from all those other sites. Instead of having to visit them all, you can see how your video is doing. So now I'm going to finish up with themes. I'm doing pretty good on time here. Jason Shula, are you in here? I know he's, he came here. Um, I talked to him briefly. He has these video-centric themes, TV elements, video elements, and video flip at Press 75. So some of my friends are using the um, TV elements, which he told me is an older one, but it's really nice. It's like the blip player. Um, oh, you can't see it that well, but it has over here on the left share and comments and embed and all these different features, and it looks a lot like Hulu. It's like, whoa, you can have like your own Hulu. That's why everybody loves that site. Here's another site, Real Social Media. You can see it better, what it looks like once it's on your blog. And then so there's, you know, it explains how to post these things. So this is interesting. You um, find an image, you, you put the URL in, then you go to the post videos, and then you post the video URL. So it's a little more labor intensive to make a post with video with this theme than just using Blip, say go, and it puts it on there. But it might be worth it because it gives you a different look. So you have to decide, you know, what your work, what you want your workflow to be. Uh, oh, so the next thing, video press is part of WordPress. Anybody using video press in WordPress? So no, at all. So video press is a host hosting that WordPress provides at five dollars a month. And what was that? Uh, it so. Um, Video Press works with WordPress.com, and you upload your videos to WordPress.com, but then you can use them on WordPress.org. It's like a media library. You don't think so? I think so. <laughs> Let's see. Add video, um, add them, and then it goes up there, and then you insert into your post. Could you see there's like the short code? Could you just use that on WordPress.org? And there it is on my blog. We can look that up. I'll look that up. Uh, and finally, uh, yeah, doing good on time. Word, so I quickly looked at WordPress 
video plugins. Um, does anybody use this one, Viper Video? No? Okay, I, I, I went on Twitter, I'm like, what video plugins does everybody use? And a few people said they like this Viper Video. And this might go to answer your question um, over here you had before, the dimensions of the video. This allows you to modify it right here in this plugin. So you um, say you give it the, U the YouTube video, and you can say what size. It's exactly what you want it to do. And then you can pick all the colors that you want. So you can customize versus just sticking in the URL. This gives you, I think, what you were looking for. Uh, change all the colors. And so that's it. We can take. We have a little time for questions. You have about two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Wrap up for that all right. Special. So if anybody, yep. Yeah. There. Um, I have a question about using rights in that sequence of information. Because um, I know, you know, for example, with YouTube, when you submit content, uh, content to them, you retain creative rights, but then you get distribution rights. And I was wondering if you um, knew if there were any outstanding issues. This stuff is going to change all the time, or, or any place we, we should worry about posting content um, if we're just you know, trying to maintain as much control over our own work as possible. Right. So the question is, you know, do you lose control of your video when you post it on YouTube? Now I think that if you um, just take them off YouTube, then uh, they don't they, they don't own it anymore. I mean, they don't own it in the first place. But like you revoke your rights for them. Um, I guess you need to read each site. But I don't I don't really think any site says they take ownership. They um, you, you own it, but I mean, each site is different. Blip has very good, um, they're very good about that. I would look at theirs as the template of what compared to the other sites. I actually stopped worrying about it. You know, I was concerned in the beginning, but then I went, you know, whatever. If there's anything I really care about, I wouldn't be, you know, putting it everywhere on the web, I guess. You know, I'm just, the, the way I look at it is I want it to just spread and be out there, and nothing that I put out there is really, that valuable. <laughs> yeah. Any? Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I switch the, the flip video or something like that, and you can tell my hat, is there a way to edit when you can pull out the audio file to insert music or do like, you know, have a voice over while you're changing software? Yep. iMovie does that. So um, what you can do, you want to take the audio. Oh, you can. Well, you, well I, I want to like cut out some frames, but keep the audio continuous, like the interview, but like put in a, a still photo or something. Yep. Like, so okay, so you have your video and the audio, and you want to put in a still frame. You click over on the right, and it it says, "Look at my photos from iPhoto," and you just click it and drag it on top, and you say, um, you, you drop it in there, and it will have the photo for, for that link. And you can change the length of the photo. And then you can um, click on the photo, and you can have it zoom in and scroll up and down, you know, automatically for you. Okay, and audio will just audio will just stay there. Yep. Steve, I'm sorry, I gotta wrap up. Okay. Just the way it is. Okay. Video press can be used on uh, WordPress and other sites. There's a plugin on the, uh, the WordPress.org directory where you can just download. It's a good, it's an interface to let you can edit, which you can also let with the code. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Keep it here. Okay.